guys and having all those guys back i think maybe saint michael's have an edge for me as well and there's a there's a change in the coaching setup this year as well michael's for me they've disappointed every year they really have they've had great individual players but haven't played as a team haven't had that cohesion haven't played for each other and i'd love to see them do that this year this match referee is helen o'reilly saint michael's will kick off playing from right to left Well, tricky ball, early St. Michael's up quickly to put pressure. What a start from St. Michael's here, Belvedere need to be calm, get the ball back to their outside half and get it clear. Oh, setting up, getting plenty of uh, bodies in the way for the box kick clearance. There you go, John, that's a sign of the weather here that really hard to get out of that corner that corner is going to be a key part of this first half i'd be peppering it because it's such a difficult place to get out of and we there we said even a box kick the wind is flooding down into that corner so very important kick that in the first half very important line out throw here the ball is one good control here comes the Movement forward now, St. Michael's edging closer to change the point of attack. Stephen Judge carrying the ball, move ball moved in field now. Good defence from Belvedere College so far, but under pressure. St. Michael take the direct route. Brian Baird in the red hat, driving towards the line. Quickly recycled. Peter O'Burn has a little look, can't find his way through. Belvedere College hold a surge again. Are the big men are going to go here. Will they go for the bottom of the post? No, they swing the left hand side. Held up just short. Another drive. Belvedere get their bodies there. Whistle blows. Ball's gone forward. Yeah, but sign of what we're going to see today. That short pass. Much shorter runners as well. So the runner's not going to get outside the first man like you'd see in defence. He's going to run tighter. And that'll mean bigger hits. You're going to see big collisions in today's game. And there, Michael's played it the right way. Unfortunately, I think you're right, John. They should have kept going the same way. He came back here left. If he touches the bottom of that post, it's a try. And it's one of the best ways to score around the post like that. Instead, they off to this side and the knock-on came. Strong drive from St. Michael's. They can't push too far. Good clearance. But you just see the way that ball flies. How much impact the wind is going to have. That was a great kick, though, from O'Sullivan. It really did. He did well there because even if his number eight picked and gone, it would have been a difficult kick, and they would have been lucky to get that kind of yardage. But they are not out of the woods. It's going to be very, very difficult to clear their lines here for Belvedere. Stephen Judge just drawing the ball. Throws towards the back, throws not straight. Tricky in those conditions to throw to the back. Yeah, I was, I was shaking my head, John. Why on earth would you do that? Early days in the game, shore up. Don't make the mistakes, like the knock-on we saw. Like the knock-on we saw. You don't do that. You don't over, you don't over, you don't make things difficult for yourself when you don't have to. Nice ball to two. You're gonna, you, you should have mauled that, Annie. And instead, you're giving Belvo lifelines. Belvedere managed to control the ball. They look to go through their hands from deep. Did it go forwards? Referees allowed to play it. Play to go on here. Little pick and drive from the Belvedere captain, Max Carney, makes a few meters. It's away from that 22. Oh, Belvedere bashing away, making some meters forward, but the players coming in seal off, I think. Penalty awarded. Tackler holding on. Ace, ace, ace. You're the captain. I don't want you to hear you react like that again, please. Just step up, step up. Uh, we'll have a shot at the post, thanks. Post. 
St. Michael's, no hesitation, going to have a shot at goal. They deserve something on the board, really, for the okay. start they've Relax. had here. Relax. Yeah, we we'll see here. I think it's number six, Roach, in on the ball. No, it's actually the big man. Yeah, St. Michael's ja captain, Jack Dunn. Yeah, leading by example, right in over the ball. For the day, a day like today, John. When you pick and go, you need extra men in the rook. You, that's that's the that's the difference. You asked me before, what will the weather do to the game? That's what it'll do to the game. You need to change your game plan. You can't play as if it's a nice day. Often wonder how much kickers practice in the situation with somebody holding the tear. Is it can be a distraction? Harry Burnt just a little bit to the left hand side of the posts as he looks. He's given that a good thump and has plenty to spare into the car park. And St. Michael's have the early lead at Donnybrook. It's important that they get results for all the ground they had, for all the position they had. We also saw glimpses of what Belvedere want to do when they have the ball trying to run there from inside their 22. Long clearance, Danfield safely taken. He O'Sullivan looking to counter attack. A support from Cagney. Clever kick into the 22. Harry Byrne is back there. He's a little bit isolated, very tight to the line. Decided to keep the ball in play, kick down the tram lines, but Belvedere come on counter attack again. Good tackle. Nice flat pass, but doesn't open up any holes in the defence. Michael Roach there made an important tackle. Belvedere, Belvedere just looking to punch holes either side of the ruck. Force the St. Michael's defensive line in tight. Clever little kick through though, was well read by Ian O'Kelly. Slips the first tackle, but brought to ground. Good counter rooking by Belvedere and a good turnover. The ball out wide, little chip through for Mark Donnelly. Tries to hack the ball on, almost kept it in play. Into touch, good work from Belvedere. I was just watching the reaction of some of the supporters watching the Belvedere team and going, why are they running it? Because they have to, you know, and, and if you go back to, back to the 22, there's a nice little steal here, looks lovely little offload. I felt that the man should have looped around him and there was space there, but the little chip through came. But going back to what I was saying, John, back in that 22 when Belvedere did run it and Michaels eventually scored, the reason they're doing it is because they won't get any ground when they kick. You'll see that. They'll get 5 metres, 10 metres. So they're actually going to back themselves to run. They're going to be into a really, really physical half. I mean, demanding on their own physique and all this fitness work they did all year because they really need to run. That wind is very, very strong. The old uh, cliche, it's be a game of two halves. It's uh, going to be uh, interesting to see how both sides deal with it. This game is live on Facebook. If you can't pick us up on Air Sport. Now a little bit of pressure on Stephen Judge. Last throw wasn't straight. Sensibly goes to the front this time. Well, good work from Belvedere. They didn't engage. Ball driven back over the line. Five meter scrum. They'll be dis disappointed with that, St. Michael's. Some perplexed looking supporters. See here, they just didn't secure it well. Drive there, people not knowing who had the ball. The first man broke away there. Number four for St. Michael's breaking away because that let Belvedere in then. And just for pure determination after that. So St. Michael's still back on their own five meter line scrum this time. Belvedere go too early. Just over enthusiastic. Just makes that clearance so much easier for Harry Byrne here. Well, Byrne finds a good touch halfway between the 22 and halfway line.
just uh, in before the ball there. Referee had enough. Sam Osborne to throw and the ball just... Ball drifted away on the breeze, back for the scrum. Yeah, and this is this type of thing you see, John, in this type of weather because it actually does slow you down mentally a little bit as well because it is icy cold out there. Just not a great lift on the man either. You can see that. And off the hooker gets the blame, but his trajectory for that throw would have been straight because it went further, it went off to one side. It's a poor lift, poor combination there from Belvedere. Back to the feet of Dan O'Donovan quite quickly. Harry Byrne taking it up to the defensive line. In off is Chris Carey. Again, nice quick ball for St. Michael's. He'll take play to halfway. It's a tackle release! Tackle release! Hold, hold. Peter O'Byrne struggling to get the ball out. Struggling to get his feet on the ground as well with all the bodies. Scott Penny taking into contact. Doesn't release the ball. Well, Killian Malloy was happy with his efforts there. They yeah, did very well. That was important. That, but you need to send more men into your rooks on a day like today. That's the key. That's the key difference. You're not going to have. Well, a bonus, failed uh, to find touch from the penalty. And Harry Byrne will put a lot of distance on this one. Belvedere have to turn and chase back. Well, probably happier it does go into touch. Good chase by St Michael's. And I think Mark Donnelly did the wise thing to let that cross the touchline. That's a heartbreaker now for Belvedere. Big opportunity there, turned around. Yeah, a loss of 50 metres. But the ball just held up in the breeze and was blown back into play. Well, throw straight this time, but too long. Stephen Judge onto it for St. Michael's at the base of the scrum. Peter O'Byrne did well getting away the first time. St. Michael's supporting players come in off their feet. And it, it's something, John, that a lot of players aren't coached about. When Stephen Judge takes that ball around the back, the, probably the worst place he can run is back towards the touchline because that's where all the defenders are going to be. He needs to run it and take out the out half, take out the 12, or at, at least give it to the back line and actually ha turn it into an, an advantage. Because, look, all those defenders are exactly where they are. All they have to do is go backwards and realign. Yeah, it was Chris Hennessy going off his feet. I think it was uh, a pressure from one of his own teammates. Belvedere win possession at the line out. Poor Cagney shouting at the next pod to get them ready. Goes to his captain, Max Carney. The ball's gone loose on the ground. Yeah, both sides are struggling with the handling here a little bit. Yeah, it's, it, 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 this is what you see, John, because it's it's cold, but it's also a little bit damp down there. And now the surface is an artificial one, but it's both still actually damp and it's slipperier somewhat, somewhat as well. And the cold hands as well, John, it has an effect. Belvedere coach Phil Wurihiko, deep in conversation. The ball squirts out. O'Donovan did well to get back and comes running in field. Took three Belvedere players to bring him down. Michael Roach coming on the burst. Really exciting in open play. And again, St. Michael's in fringe on the ground. Belvedere trying to steal. St. Michael's holding on. Phenomenal work by Hawkshaw. Brilliant work. Big man running into them. It was Roach. Here they go. Belvedere tapped and gone this time. Have they created a sp space? What best option really is going to be very difficult to find the touchline from the center of the field. That's the 22 meter line on your screen. Cagney gets the ball away to Max Carney. Carney wrapped up quickly. Cagney goes back the narrow side. Belvedere had extra numbers, but they take the ball into contact. Now come back the other direction. Scott Penny up to make an important tackle. Hawkshaw goes back inside to Carney and wriggles through the legs of the tackler. Yeah. 
Not held. Dermody race away. St. Michael's appeal. O'Sullivan is going to get a soft try, but deserves it for his persistence. Back to his feet quickly. And then he one thing on his mind then. First try of the game goes to Belvedere. And he was a key component of last year's victory. The senior cup. Look at this. And you talked about this, John. Players hanging on to the ball. Extra men in the ruck makes a huge difference. Running back out. Look at that clean out. Good clean out. Extra men again in that ruck. Great pass here. Not held. Nobody behind. Straight through the middle. And we said fortune favours the brave, but also the wise. Belvedere are playing the conditions really well, not kicking because they won't get any dividends. And this is easy. Well, here Sullivan has the conversion attempt, adds the two points to his five. And Belvedere have a four-point lead. Well, he scored the final try last season against St. Michael's in the semi-final. Intercept as Michaels were looking for the fight at the score to come level. And as Sullivan's trying conversion is Belvedere seven, St. Michaels three. Good clearance. Yeah, good clearance. He probably didn't want it to go out though. But uh, the wind is very strong, so having a line out, they'll have to adapt the conditions and not go for the back. I saw them warning, warming up beforehand. They kept Pepper in the back of the line out. Well, that one's let go. Well, I'm attempting to affect a little bit of advantage in midfield. It's a Belvedere advantage for the knock on St. Michael's. Just unable to hold on to that final pass. No advantage to Belvedere. Back for the scrum. And Ma Michaels are ju they're just not playing the conditions. And by that, what I mean is, don't go through a move for the sake of going through the move. Uh, most teams have a way they play. And Bel this is what one of the great things where he goes done with Belvedere. He's put in a kind of a culture of how they play. This is a perfect example of that. It's quick rook, play the conditions, get the offload away. We're probably looking here to see if he was held there. He wasn't. Troy stands. But but, but Michaels are going through the move because they have to half the time, not playing what's on. And that's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference between a champion and a second place. Well, Belvedere go through the hands again. Good strong running from Donnelly. The rubber kicked through once again it's worked hack john is it going to be a second try for belvedere yes it is brilliant brilliant finish and again a little bit fortunate but belvedere are taking the game to st michael's and it's paying dividends so far try number two and a great composure really really here we see it again it's a nice move here this set it up those good Feet from Peter Marr to burst a hole through the defence and clever little kick through there. And then it just slipped through the legs of Ian O'Kelly. And Wilkes, Jordan Wilkes had chased down hard. Great pace, big athletic winger. And he didn't panic, John. You know, you often see guys panic and they feel the breeze at their heels, and he didn't there at all. He just re retained his composure. And, and being forced to run has actually gone in their, in their favour because they would have played a totally different game. Well, here O'Sullivan having problems with the kicking tee as well. David Hawkshaw comes forward to just keep the ball steady. Oh, taking plenty of time, sends it on its way, he's given it a good thumb. But wide of the posts, difficult angle and very difficult conditions, as we've said a couple of times already. Decent effort, though, all the same. And he's been key again today in today's performance today. But I'm saying that they, they would have played differently had they been on the other side of the pitch today. Had they been, had the wind behind them, they would have played differently. And it could actually work out to their, to their advantage. Jordan Wilkes, the try scorer, Belvedere leads 12 points to three.
possession secured from the restart. Now Belvedere just need to affect their exit. Cagney's box kick. Well, that's uh, going straight into touch. He was outside the 22. Yeah, that's just the wind. It was actually a good kick. The wind's just so strong. It pulled it in to, towards the touchline. He'd be disappointed, but it, again, he, he did. He actually did very little wrong. The wind just took that one out of his control. Now, uh, can St. Michael's respond here? Line out on the Belvedere 22. Taken by Ryan Bird. Bird ball moved into midfield quickly. Chris Carey in from that left wing. Tackled in the 22. Michael's come the other direction. Harry Bird charging through a big hole in the defence. Dan O'Don, the big number eight. Wriggles his way. Gets a few metres further forward. Now it goes to the captain, Jack Dunn. Good charge by Dunn, but again, just holding on to the ball. Belvedere got in and snaffled so many times in the opening 20 minutes. Yeah, for me, though, Mike, Michael's just playing intricate moves when they don't need to. They're a huge side. Put extra men in the rook, play the conditions, go the same way, same way, same way. Like, you don't need to overcomplicate this. This is... But the, the game becomes even more basic when the weather is like this. You go back to basics and you stop the intricacies because the weather just doesn't work with that. Yeah, it was great work by Belvedere there. One man in to make the tackle low and two, two teammates waiting to go for the ball. Good work by St. Michael's to turn that one over. Belvedere unable to recycle after taking the ball into the mall. Well, I hope you're enjoying this game. Any of you watching on Facebook, you're very welcome to our coverage here at Donnybrook. Back to the feet of O'Donovan. Byrne gets it away. Harry Byrne sees a bit of space again. Good defensive tackle from Connor Doran. O'Donovan with the carry. Michael Roach there on his shoulder. Byrne gets it away again. Jack Dunn felled on the uh, 22 meter line. Roach with the carry that time. Scott Penny picks and drives. Good stuff now from St. Michael's. They need to convert this pressure into something on the scoreboard. Just keeping it tight for the moment. O'Donovan has a little bit of a look, picks and goes. The rain and hail just getting harder and harder here. That's gone loose. Bubble forward. Yeah, knock on both sides. It's Same. better though, John, isn't it? It's, it, it's, it's one play, it's one phase, Ruby. It's, it's, it's give it. It's put extra men in a row, go the same way, and see how much ground they made. And Byrne there making that break. That's that's what you do. You do the basics really well. You send in the men and you go the same way. Unfortunately, the, the handling error came. But up until that, it was really, really good. And it will work. If you keep to that, it will work. Bind! Set! Yeah, sensible, basic, good play from Belvedere. One standoff, a Sullivan finds touch. They bring him in as the scrum half every now and then at defensive positions, and it's effective. Yeah, and uh, there was nothing on as well. Sullivan's good at that. He's good at playing, the, playing what's in front of him, and that was the right option. Again, it goes to the back, bobbles around. Harry Byrne tidies it up. Two big tackles coming in. Ball bobbling around, came off a foot. Hand away, Black! Hand away, Black! Hand away! Hand away! Well, Belvedere got plenty of warning there. Now, Byrne managed to send the last one into the car park. He was closer. 
but he might fancy the shot here. No, he's down the line. He's had a good game, Bird. He's played the conditions well. He's played what's in front of him very well. In fairness to the referee, she said that many times. We heard it there, but when you're in the heat of the battle, you just sometimes, the red mist is around you. St. Michael's win the ball. Ball went loose. You hear the referee shouting, it was dropped backwards. Drellin Murray sneaking through to make a tackle. St. Michael's though, still have possession. Pick and drive from Jack Dunn. Good support coming. Good strength from Dunn as well. Just got an extra roll in to protect the ball. No Donovan waiting, picks and drives. This is good stuff from St. Michael's. They're eight to ten meters out from the try line now. It's slow and effective, but the ball's gone loose. Over here. Oh. High tackle. Belvedere tried to tap and go, but brought back to take the penalty from the correct position. Yeah, He's a good Hawkshaw. player, Hawkshaw, isn't he? he? He really he did a fantastic campaign last year. But it, what I like about him is he's a tackler, he's a scraggler on the ground. He does the dirty work as well as the fancy stuff. And here, look at this, he's straight back on his feet. Spots the opportunity to go, and he goes. Oh, again, that foot drifting away. In the air, but so hard for the line-out thrower. St. Michael's have turned over, won the ball in that line-out. Ryan Baird driving in, but he's into a choke tackle here. Now he gets to Grant. St. Michael's play on Byrne having a little look off both shoulders gets the ball away to David Ryan Belvedere in with good counter rucking once again St. Michael somehow secure the ball oh, Byrne away to Harry Byrne once again almost getting through the gap he's a real threat when he carries the ball Jack Dunn again, a willing carrier. Belvedere quick to counter rook. Connor Doran though, driven off his feet. Belvedere up tigerish work. Peter O'Byrne, the scrum half, swallowed up, but Belvedere off their feet. Where he goes, be happy, Phil, where he goes. They're, they're showing the passion they showed last year. I remember now, I, I had flashbacks of them last year. Second what the rest has to say. Stay up, please. Okay, stay up. Little warning for Connor Doran. Good refereeing from Helen O'Reilly. Speak to the players. She's speaking to them very clearly. Very well, so yeah. She's, she's controlled the game very well. But I was saying the Belvedere players are very, very good at counter rocking. You know, they did it last year. I had for, quite forgotten about it until I see them there and have flashbacks. They did it really well. And they were able to balance their game between the hard graft and the fancy stuff when that needed to be. Can Harry Byrne reduce the margin here? Pretty central position, straight in front of the posts. 35 or so meters out. Sends it on its way. Good kick from Harry Byrne. He's uh, with the wind advantage. He's kicking at quite a distance, but he needs accuracy as well. And St. Michael's reduced the margin to six. And they'll take it. They'll take courage from that because they earned that score. And they did, they were doing what we were talking about, John, those short phases, pick and go, one off runs. I know it's not pretty, but it works, especially in conditions like this. Well, we've got the uh, next three quarter finals coming up this week on Air Sport Black Rock versus Terry Your College tomorrow. On Tuesday, Clongos take on St. Mary's. And then on Wednesday, Ross Gray will take on Gonzaga. Help! 
Well, Belvedere failing to deal with the aerial bombardment there. St. Michael's come up with possession. Jack Dunn showing his raw strength. Harry Byrne moves the ball on the Belvedere defense line up very, very quickly. Nino Kelly swallowed up. And Belvedere in again, penalty. Difficult decision now for Belvedere. They're struggling at line out time. Is there much point in kicking? Yeah, that touch. Because because it's settled so much, there's nowhere to run here with Michaels. They're all lined up, so just get it into touch is the main thing. But the, but they need to change their line. Uh, trying to go for the middle or the back is a risk today. It's y yes, it's it's a, it's a bit it's a bit more it's harder to win at the front, but uh, he's got to go for Michaels' coach there. I'd say he's he's thinking. You need we need to simplify things. Well, the ball goes loose. Over there. Good fortune on that occasion. The ball didn't go forward. Hawkshaw, little miss move in midfield. There's too many blue shirts there, though. Ball goes loose. Good defense from St. Michael's. St. Michael's supporters appreciate the effort. The side still trailing by six points here. Good defense. Harry Byrne in the thick of it, put in an important tackle. And one arm in attacking the ball. Ready, 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 ready. Stay balanced, Evan. Ready, 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 ready. It was an awkward pass. Just floated away on the breeze. David Ryan had to readjust. He's done quite well here. He's got ahead of his forwards. St. Michael's attacked down that narrow side with Dan O'Donovan. There comes the box kick from Carey. And finds the safety a touch. Good clearance. Right thing to do in the circumstances. Is that a good game, O'Donovan, as well? Number eight for Michaels. Take the line, Bill, yeah. Good dynamic runner. Well, Belvedere here wisely go to the front this time, secure possession. Jack Dunn rolling out of the way, a little bit of a clash in midfield. No obstruction, no defenders close enough. Belvedere forced back almost to halfway, have to think again. Back to basics, going with the big man, good tackle. Jack Dunn getting low. St. Michael's tackling hard, not making giving Belvedere any chance to find an opening. Hawkshaw runs into a big tackle. Might struggle to get the ball out of here. Cagney's waiting for it. It's there on the Belvedere side. Cagney has a little go. Ball's gone loose. Referee said it went backwards. Didn't thought it might have come off for St. Michael's shirt. Step. Well, St. Michael shouting for more support on the left-hand side. Belvedere looked like they're ready to attack on their left and the St. Michael's right. Well, it paid dividends for their last fight. The defense better on this occasion. Belvedere have really just gone the full width of the pitch between the hands. Well, that one's a bit high. Penalty. It's going over and back with a reckless tackle. Maybe referee wants to speak to the captain. I need them to go lower. I need to see a change in behavior, please. Can you speak to the player? Yeah. That's the second high tackle. Yeah, I've just spoken to him there. So then. Time off. Yeah, and Belvedere, lucky Belvedere. They're a bit like a, an octopus on rollerblades, John. A lot of movement, not much direction. They're going each side. If, if you If you pass to a player coming on your left as a scrum half, 
and they run into contact and then you give to another guy on your right and you keep doing that pattern the defenders who make the tackle just get back to their feet and keep defending you're actually going nowhere and that's the whole key is to go the same way unlock some space and then get the ball to that space as, as quick as possible but over there were running up running up their own backsides there a lot and not going anywhere and they were lucky to get that penalty in the end well let's take a look at the second Belvedere try We've got the ball moving through the hands quickly here it's a lovely little half break there Peter Marr he did so well then Hawkshaw's clever kick through and just watch Jordan Wilkes here great pace not easy to control the rugby ball at that speed with the knee or shin just got a right touch on it and then as you said Aiden he didn't panic a nice composed running by him Belvedere found a good touch here Belvedere bringing Joseph Hawhey into the action number 18 Straight into the heart of the scrum. Belvedere throw to the front. Oh, ball almost getting swallowed up. Belvedere get it away. Look to move through the hands. St. Michael's defense line, defensive line, well organized. Oh, De Jong gets the ball away. Went forward though. Referee blows the half-time whistle. There won't be time for the scrummage. St. Michael's head back to their change room. I'd say both sides will go in in these conditions, Aiden. Interesting half. Belvedere, obviously with the lead, but in the playing into the breeze, they'll be delighted. Yeah, they'll be delighted the way they, they've gone into the half. They'll have the breeze in the second half. They're in the lead. Very important. Half-time score. Belvedere College 12, St. Michael 6. Bank of Ireland, supporting Leinster Rugby from the ground up. Join me, Philippe Saint-André, and my top-class PSA Academy team in team this summer for the ultimate high-performance rugby experience with camps for intermediate and advanced players from 10 to 18 years of age. Go to psaacademy.com or email sales at psaacademies.com to book your place today. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. PSA Academies, maximize your potential. We may not have the big things, but the stuff we do have, we love. Whatever you love, whatever you're into, look after it with car and stuff from Liberty Insurance. Now get up to two months free car insurance when you quote and buy online at libertyinsurance.ie. That's insurance the way it should be. We only realise how precious our fluidity of movement is when joint pain and discomfort begin. Revive Active Joint Complex provides all-in-one comprehensive support for joint function and mobility. With an abundance of ingredients like no other health supplement, our enhanced quadruple action formula get cartilage, bones and connective tissue all the nutrients they need to help your joints function as they should. With Revive Active Joint Complex, we put more in so you get more out. Find out more at reviveactive.com. This is figuring things out for yourself. This is cultural exchange. This is experiencing a real work environment. This is studying at UL. Visit study at ul.ie. I love this Sunday sun. The week's not yet begun. My brother's probably my actual best friend. I have two best friends. Since 1834, Friends First have been helping ensure Irish people's futures. <laughs> this would be my best friend. Contact your financial broker for details on how we could help you. Well, sure, that's what friends are for. You're amongst friends with Friends First. 
With 20 years of coaching excellence under our belts, the Bank of Ireland Leinster School of Excellence will be returning to the King's Hospital for four weeks this summer. The Leinster School of Excellence offers boys and girls aged 12 to 17 separate camps with top-class coaching from professional coaches, weekly guest speakers, visits from Leinster Academy players and daily video analysis. So, live and train like a professional player this summer. Book an early bird place of 399 residential and 299 non-residential at leinsterrugby.ie forward slash SOE. 53 degrees north, Ireland's largest outdoor retailer with the largest range. We have everything you need in your pursuit of adventure and the outdoors. Do something extraordinary in 2017 with 53 degrees north. Visit our stores in Dublin and Cork or check out 53degreesnorth.ie. For a limited time only, enjoy a 10% price reduction on all Mercedes-Benz models. Meaning going from the ordinary to the extraordinary is now even easier. The Mercedes-Benz C-Class from €380 Euro per month, one day, is now. Bank of Ireland, supporting Leinster Rugby from the ground up. Very welcome back to Donnybrook. Sides, uh, both sides still in the changing rooms, and I think it's quite a wise decision. It's a freezing cold February afternoon here. Belvedere playing into the conditions and into the breeze, into the hail in the first half. The lead, 12 points to six. Two tries. Here's the first one. Yeah, we see ball through the hands. Nice and simple. This is the key to this game. Nice and simple, going through the hands. Don't over complicate things. O'Sullivan here, watch this, he's not held. Nobody behind the rook, everybody eyes on what else is there. And O'Sullivan under the sticks, really important try to steady the nerves early. Just gives you some idea. Look at the umbrellas on the left-hand side of the screen there. Here's the Belvedere second try, great attack down the left-hand side. Peter Marr coming into the line here, just cuts through the defence. Good leg drive to keep going, Aiden. Yeah, and he really ran at the arms there, ran at the, the branches, not the trunk. And look at Wilkes here. It's a little slip up the ball, bobbling all over the place like it does on that surface. But Wilkes held his composure really, really well. And that gave them the second try. Well, so Michael Scratch still in fine voice. Interesting to see how their game plan changes at all with the playing now into the wind yeah i hope to see it change that it's, it's one of the one of the things in rugby for me that's that's gone out of the game is playing what's in front of you instead of teams are sometimes over coached and they just go through the moves for the sake of going through the moves instead of playing what's in front of them and oftentimes you see blind sides wide open and they go through the move because it was called not because it was on and sometimes the number nine in particular number eight perhaps needs to take charge and just play what's in front And we're on Facebook Live as well. If you're leaving the house and you have a, a, a phone that'll pick up the game while you're traveling, you can see the full coverage of the second half on Facebook Live. Well, there's Harry Byrne, the St. Michael's outside half scorer of all their six points, two good penalties. If you are leaving the house and coming down to Belvedere, bring a second pair of gloves for me, will you? And maybe a hat. <laughs> Your wish is my command. John, John, just, John just pulled out a second pair of gloves. That's like the scene in Dumb and Dumber where he's like, I have two pairs of gloves. Into the bag, a half. Oh, well. there you, God, go, you watched me freeze for the first half. I thought it was your choice. You're such a hard man, Aiden. <laughs> uh, I'll take it, I'll take it. Thanks, John. Belvedere out as well. You're freezing? I have two pairs of gloves. Well, the first five minutes of this half could tell us everything. David Hawkshaw ready to kick off, just sending the uh, signal. Helen O'Reilly beside him will hold things up just for a moment to.
35 minutes to go. Six points between these two sides. And Belvedere continue the way they play. They probably want to keep playing that form even with the breeze behind them now. Keep the ball tight. Harry Byrne moving the ball on. Bubbles around. Luke on backwards. St. Michael's continue. Did well to keep the ball in play there, but not on this occasion. The black and white shirts get there, drive the ball over the touchline. And they're almost a mirror image of how Belvedere started the first half. Run through the hands out in that far wing. You mentioned Belvedere. Belvedere have the confidence in knowing they can play through the hands like they did in the first half, but the confidence of having the wing behind them as well. So they have they have the luxury of two options, and that's the key to getting through the first half when the when you're against the wind, running the ball, and having the six point advantage. Medical staff running on it. Hopefully nothing too serious. Hot food needed, badly needed. If there's a fellow going around with a flask of soup now, he get a big hug. <laughs> Tony, somebody, somebody uh, on hot chocolate duty would be great today. The breaks like this won't help the sides either. You know, the breaks up the concentration. Yeah, and, and the, the longer those kind of breaks go on, you, you see teams warming up as well. Or we're straight back in the action now. Again, lineouts have been a disaster day because of the weather, but they need to they need to adapt the lineout for the weather. As we need a bigger gap, you're jumping into each other's gap. Hold the gap out, please. Well, the two sets of jumpers going early in that occasion. Helen O'Reilly wants the lineout taken again. With lineout as well on a day like today, the, the gap, lifters Michael. are absolutely key. They need to be so on point with their lift and put extra. Hold the player in the air a little bit extra long. Not the second attempt, Belvedere win possession. Unable to get any forward momentum at the first surge, but they've done so now. Well, the ball went a little bit loose there. Ken Walsh tidying things up. Belvedere up to the 22 meter line. St. Michael scrambling to get away from the uh, offside position, keep the ball available for Belvedere. Don't want to concede a penalty. Now Belvedere looking to find a gap in that defence. Good tackle by David Ryan. The ball is there once again, though, for Cagney. Ino you know, Kelly up very, very quickly to make the tackle. Belvedere squeeze down the narrow side, give themselves the full width of the pitch to go the other direction. Just keep it get among the big men for the moment. St. Michael's continue to put in the tackles. Long pass throw now. Belvedere looking to go into open country. Little pick and drive, gains a few meters. Oh, good strength from. We need to get that Connor ball out Dorn. wide. The space out left. Oh, it's gone now. We're screaming for it there, John. It was space out wide. Now they go again. Again, good strength. Oh. Belvedere to within 10 meters of that try line. Scott Penny and Dan O'Donovan bring in tackle after tackle. Bear pumping his legs, driving the ball carrier leave backwards. Cagney skips one, looks to open up a bit of space, goes to Max Carney, changing the point of attack. Cagney looking left, looking right, comes back to the left hand side. It's very patient from Belvedere and very. Good defense from St. Michael so far. Jack Dunn diving in low. Has it created a bit of space? Maybe it has. Ruin Byron charging towards the line and touches down at the bottom of the post. Try awarded. Great effort from Ruin Byron. After so much patient play, Belvedere awarded. Very clever play. Really clever play by him as well. He knew what he was doing running at that post, didn't he? 
but he looked at the way he spotted the gap. He spotted a little mismatch there, the perfect handoff because he hands off behind him. That gives him the propulsion to get going. Straight at the sticks, really great try. A good strength, three St. Michael's players on him for the, as he went to ground, still had the presence of mind and the strength to reach and touch the bottom of the cushion on the post. That counts as a try. And Hugh O'Sullivan has the conversion. One from two in the first half. This one straight in front of that right-hand post. Two steps. No problem for Hugh O'Sullivan. And Belvedere open up a little bit of daylight. That's a great try. Look at this again, John, because one of the key things, great, great pick and go. Look at the players through. Quick ball. Nice placement for the scrum half. Look at this handoff. That is a perfect handoff because he's given himself an extra little propulsion as he goes. And he knew exactly what he was doing. Well, good chase up by St. Michael's. They make the tackle. Perfectly timed tackle as the ball arrived, but Belvedere have it. Just outside their 22. They lead 19 points to six now. Gets the box kick away, good di distance on it. And it's taken by Jody Booth, substitute for St. Michael's. Here's O'Donovan running into Sam Osborne. A little change of direction from O'Byrne. Harry Byrne gets it out wide. And Jeff O'Loughlin. Decided that getting away from the touchline was the best option. Has it set up a platform here? Oh, lovely bit of work. Alex Deegan charging across up to the 10 meter line. Leave it. Belvedere a little bit slow to roll away. Now it's there. Harry Byrne tries a little chip through. Kelly's chasing down. Well dealt with there. Mark Donnelly. Good play. They've taken the ball back into the 22. They lose ground here. Well spotted referee. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a great option from that kick yeah, through, but I know why he did it. Winger did a great job. The winger look, made it look like he was in the line, and then Byrne looked up and thought that he was a gap there, and then he went back and got it. You got the tape? Yeah, no problem. It's better time now. Brian Barrett just uh, receiving a little bit of attention. He looks okay. And St. Michael supporters well, need to lift their team here as they're away back. We saw some amazing comebacks last season. Yeah, 19-6 though. That's, that's achievable. Two tries. Seems like a big gulf, but it's not. You're getting what you got to just chip margin. But they do need a try, John. For their, even for their confidence, they need a try. They probably can't afford to let Belvedere score again. If that margin goes any wider, it's going to yeah. be very, very tough. I'm sure that's go what's going through that man's head. They really need to just consolidate, go through one phase rugby, just build confidence in themselves. Jody Booth winning the ball in the line out. <laughs> Tell you, I wouldn't be holding the ball like that. I'm not going to win her, John. Belvedere have dealt with this quite well. St. Michael's edging forward but unable to get any real momentum. David Ryan at first receiver. Up through a half gap, then he was held. This is Jack Dunn, the captain, carrying Ryan Bird coming on his shoulder. Scott Penny is there as well. Now Dan. Jody Booth with him. Oh, the pass low, difficult to deal with it. Corcoran did very well indeed to scoop it off the ground. Yes, that's going to be a card. He's slipping into it. Don't go around the neck, okay? Be very close. I'm surprised you didn't pull out a card there, because that's three of them. But it, and actually, he, he went low on that occasion. So I don't think there was much malice in that one, but I thought she was reaching for a card. Yeah, definitely. She, Helen O'Reilly decided it was. She had to speak to the tackler. 
But um, I think when she's warned earlier, it was St. Michael she warned about oh, the Michael's. continuous yeah. high tackles. Okay. Yeah, you look at this. And good carry by O'Donovan. I just feel they need to send extra men in the ruck in the weather and the conditions to get quicker ball. And what happened is they're playing as if they were, if it's a nice day, if it's a good day of rugby. And you have to adapt your conditions. And that's the kind of little elements that make a huge difference. Now St. Michael's with a five metre line out. Well by Ryan Baird. Now, can they use the big man to drive over here? They've just lodged, they've got around the Belvedere line. Her cross is a touchdown. Helen O'Reilly has a long look at it. I think she's saying it's held up. Well, she was right there. She's had a great game, ref. She was right there. Stephen Judge saying it. Well, he looks convinced he touched down. Have a look at this. Certainly across no, two the two guys line. under it. She's right. Underneath them. She's right. She is right there. And actually, really, really well done by the Belvedere players. They did it at the right moment, and two of them right there in front of the referee. Right, yeah. Max Carney just taking a moment to tie his shoelaces, get his team uh, ready for this scrum. Well, St. Michael's are lining up, they're ignoring the blind side here. Harry Byrne thought about the offload, kept the ball in hand. And away, Black! Good defence from Belvedere, they got across. Now there's another surge over this time, try awarded. And St. Michael's deserve that, and they're right back in this game. Well, tempers are a little bit now. The ref referee sending the St. Michael's players away. It's exactly what this game needed. First ten. Okay. There's a high tackle. We're playing advantage off it. Can I give you a tap finger, please? Captain. Okay, that's all I need you for. Here we go. Look, ball through the hands. This big man. He's been carrying well all day. Look at that. Ref right on the money. And they deserve that. They've been peppering away. And captains try again. The ref just warning players about uh, high tackle. And the conditions are getting worse here in Donnybrook. So that was key timing for Bet Michaels to get that one. This conversion could be so important. The margin is eight points. This would get it to six. Good strike from Harry Byrne, no mistake. Margin six points, convert to try. And that's not an easy kick, it's easy, yes, it's it's on a normal day, it's easy, but right into the wind, rain, and a player holding the ball. Well done, Harry Byrne. We have a game back on our hands. Belvedere 19, St. Michael's 13. <laughs> 25 minutes left in the game. Jonathan safe catch and good drive away into the tackles. Michael Corcoran brought to ground. Baird, good strong run from him. Good ball, pl ball placement as well. Harry Byrne looks to find some space. Hugh O'Sullivan back there, read the bounce well. Kick back just straight down the throat of Harry Byrne. Eno Kelly into the line, looking to counter attack from deep, stopped on his own 10 meter line. Ball goes loose, but it went back. Ryan Baird reacted quickly. Well, is there a little bit of obstruction there? It's worked out okay. Jeff O'Loughlin on the wing. Brought to Grant. It was badly, badly orchestrated by Michaels. Judge gave the pass then, but the next men into that rook did a poor job. They didn't take out the men. You gotta take out the next threat, which is the men going for the ball. And just when they were getting a bit of momentum, look at this. Carry goes in next thing. Judge, Judge needs to take out those two men.
not go for the ball, take out the men. And the momentum that they'd been building, Michael's just been taken out. Very yeah. important for Belvedere. Yeah, foothold here now, just outside the 22. The ball bubbling around awkwardly. Cagney did very well indeed. Belvedere without a scrum half now. Good play though from the pack, little picks and drives to try and set up quicker possession. Jody Booth in making the tackle on that occasion, but it's good sensible play from Belvedere in these conditions. They do have the winds in the back, but it's so wet. It's the opportunity for the tight game. Now they look to move the ball a little bit wide. Hawk shot with Connor Doran on his shoulder. Belvedere hold on to the possession. Just, just lost their shape a little bit here. Got back to the basics. Good drive. Player not held was on the second occasion. Ruin Byron. Belvedere try scorer with the little drive on that occasion. Here they come once again. Oh, it's a good choke tackle. Belvedere can't get the ball to ground, they can't get the ball out. Turnover for St. Michael's, good work. Baird there, brilliant work by him, he started that. It's a great team effort there by Michael's, really, really key. And the way Belvedere are playing there is exactly what Michael's need to do. One off, one player rugby. Just a bit high, player caught high here, look at this. He was actually not going in high, I thought he was, he, he was the culprit, but they did so well, the Michael's players, they held him up there. better on the offside lines, yeah. David Ryan and, and uh, Baird did the damage. Welcome to all our watchers on uh, viewers on Facebook. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. And, and if you are watching internationally, this isn't typical Irish weather. It's usually lovely in Ireland. Ball picked by O'Donovan. Tenacious work from Connor Doran. Eventually bringing O'Donovan to ground. Here's, here's Jack Dunn. St. Michael's captain. Peter O'Byrne struggling to get the ball out just so eventually. Quick hands in midfield. Corcoran working with Scott Penny. They don't find any space though. The clearance away to touch. There's more and more squally breezes blowing around here. O'Donovan's had a cracking game from Michaels. He's really carried well. Osborne goes a little bit long once again, just failed to catch, reach the jumper. St. Michael's come away with possession. Good little charge from Scott Penny. Belvedere almost got hands in to steal the ball again. Strong running from Alex Deegan. Good clear out. Harry Byrne thought there was a little bit of space. Good strength from the outside half, driving forwards. Oh, that's a magic little break from David Ryan. Eventually brought to ground about six, eight metres outside the 22. Michael's options both sides, they go to the left. Ryan Baird takes it into contact, driving towards that 22 metre line. A burn in, goes flat to Jack and his captain. This is better stuff from St. Michael's. They need quick ball, they've men wide here if they can go through the hands. Chris Hennessy in the line, drop forward. Belvedere managed to slow it down. They've got reorganized here. Harry Byrne moves it on to Baird. Now there's men left here. Can they get it out there? Create the space. Lovely little break. Booth charging towards the line. Stopped in his tracks. Big important tackle. Now St. Michael's come the other way again. Is there space? No, the uh, ball's gone loose. Turnover opportunity. It's picked out. Uh, St. Michael's have to chase. 
Hop over there, brother, get all the way. Good chase back, who's handed it? Go on. St. Michael's appealing, brilliant tackle and chase back. And the call comes to the touch judge who was knocked down by Belvedere. I think it's the right decision. The Belvedere supporters don't like it. Who's going off there? Let's yeah. That was fantastic play, wasn't it? So, so lucky for St. Michael's. Look at this. And even at that stage, there was a flood of player. Wilkes there getting making the tackle. Belvedere making a change in the front row. Sam Osborne heading off. Into the action comes Connor Byrne. Some great play from Michaels and, and see what they're capable of now. Some beautiful, intricate little flick there from Mount Donovan. In the middle of all that, the number eight. Really unlocking players, running good lines, running at arms, getting the offloads away. But most mostly important running good angles and getting extra men in that rook and making quick ball Drew and Byron uh, just getting his shoulders checked there Didn't we'll take any risks with him but there's some uh, ferocious tackles going in in this game here's the ball through the hands look at this big tackle there just got taking the arms out you see and that was Byron Big tackle from the Belvo number eight. Really important tackle. So St. Michael's back in possession, but back inside their own half. Six points between the sides, remember. O'Donovan popped pass to a burn. Ball moved on. Didn't go to hand, though. It's gone loose, but it went backwards. And the ball. So put on the touch line, a hand on the ball, that's the line edge. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Nine do all day. Ten. Hey, 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 hey. Nine. Bit of frustration Nine. there. Now simplify this line out. Make, hook, new hooker on, make it easy for him. When the hooker comes on the pitch, make it easy. No, they go to the and back, they don't. not straight. And, and see, now his confidence will be shot. He's straight on the pitch, throw it to the front of the line, out, simplify it. I don't think we've seen one simple ball into the line out all day. You've got to make things simple for yourself. It's so important for Belvedere. The big lead has been eaten away here. Michaels are coming back at them. They need some time in possession. Even if it was the sunniest day in the world, when a hooker comes on, you throw to two, you get him into the game easily. Stay behind him, nine. One skip to the line. Ball did that go forward? Yes, it did. Off the hands. Well, Belvedere captain has come in and made a tackle here after the whistle has gone. There's another captain, it's Connor Doran. He goes to the sin bin. Fair play. Reference had a great game. No nonsense. Talked to players all day. Called it as it is. Did a great job on calling that try that wasn't a try. She's just having no nonsense. Zero. Zero tolerance. Oh, Harry Byrne has failed to find touch. Clever kick, grubber kick, got a good bit of distance on it. Harry Byrne is back there, looks to come on the counter attack. Anxious moments now for Belvedere College. Dan uh, a player. The ball's gone loose. Leave it seven. Belvedere turn it over. Kick for territory. Where's this gonna bounce? Which way will it go? Into touch. Beautiful box kick. Crossfield, one bounce into touch. A handful of salt in the wounds, John. Captain, captain. It's a great kick by Hawkshot. We'll just go back, have a look at the, the yellow card. Watch this. Through the hands. Ref blows the whistle, you see. So game's off because of that. And then the tackle comes in. And the reason that's so bad is it, it, in rugby, when, when you're on, you're on. It's almost like your force feels on. You're ready to be in. But when you turn off and you're not looking at that, it gets when you kind of get those whiplash type injuries. 
So that's why the ref called and that's why she gave a yellow. Belvedere getting a little bit of a shove here, putting pressure on Peter O'Byrne. Box kick half blocked down, flies in field. Harry Byrne received the ball, two tacklers. Belvedere drive over the ball. St. Michael's just got some of the big men there in time to retain the ball and retain possession. Got Penny, good effort from him. They pick and go the other direction now with Alex Deegan. Post. Too many black and white shirts there. The ball is back to the feet of Peter O'Byrne. He'll try the box kick once again. Gets it away this time. And finds the safety of touch. Belvedere will be happy enough with that, though. But yeah, but Michaels will feel the sands of time slipping away. Because this game doesn't seem to be going anywhere for them at the moment. They need to take advantage of the man in the bin. And they can afford to send an extra man in the rook now more than ever. But I don't see the captain bringing them in, grabbing players by the jersey and going, this is what we're going to do for the next five minutes, the next ten minutes, and break the game into manageable chunks. Again, Belvedere throw long in the line out. Doesn't work out for them. Turned over. Oh, good strength. Scott Penny got hit hard there, but he managed to retain possession. St. Michael's in a little bit of difficulty. Penalty. Oh, what a time for Belvedere to get a decision. Hugh O'Sullivan will have a pop here, I'm sure, and he won't be in any rush. It's a great hit, a great hit on Penny. There was a great tackle on Penny here, the number seven for Michaels, but he managed to get the ball away. Then there was a second big hit as well. Here we see the ball through the hands. Look at his balls pop to Penny. Bang. Gets the offload away, which is great. David Ryan may be guilty, just had his eyes up on the players not watching the ball. Yeah, but the more the more they feel under pressure, Michaels, and I mentioned the signs of time slipping away. The more they feel that, the more they panic, the more they put the ball through the hands when they shouldn't. And then this is what you'll see. Mistakes, turnovers, intercepts, breakaway tries. Hugh O'Sullivan successful. Two Four, kicks out of three. Yeah, thank you. And in the sense of where this game is going, this kick is so important. If it goes over, St. Michael's will need to score twice. <laughs> Plus, it's eating up, uh, eating up important time on the sin bin clock. Sullivan may have to hurry here a little bit. Steps up, sends it on its way. It's a good kick from O'Sullivan. And is that going to be the one that seals the win for the holders, Belvedere College? The margin out to nine points. Michaels will feel the coast of the past. Creeping up again. Can it be their year? They need to really pull it out of the bag now. That's an unbelievable take when the tackle came in. The floor was really swirling around. Oren O'Brien, great effort to hold the ball, but his momentum and the tackler coming in just slid him across the carpet to the touchline. Now, somebody please give us a simple line out. Throw to the front, just get it in, maul it. Well, Stephen Judge has received the call. Goes to the middle of the line out, Baird. Well, he caught the ball safely, but his lifters let him down a little bit, but away breaks Scott Penny. And Byrne gets the ball to Jack Dunn as captain. Dunn driving forward straight in front of the post, eight metres out. Good clear out, but it just took a second or two. Belvedere's defensive line reorganised. Penny with another drive, but Byrne gets his pass away. It's a tackle, release, release. Well, they have been told to release here. The ball carrier's knees are on the ground. That makes it a tackle. They go to John once again. Connor Byrne makes the important tackle. Baird. Well, the two second ropes of St. Michael's done some ball. Here's Harry Byrne. Has a couple of actions. Chips cross field. Can Russell touch it down? He does indeed. And then it's not from the touch judge. And St. Michael's have the try. It's right out wide, though. It's going to be a very difficult conversion attempt. But Rob Russell, he's in, isn't in the game that long. And that's a great finish. Beautiful kick. He really did finish it well. And brilliant, brilliant vision by Byrne. 
He spotted him out there, executed it, because this bobbly, the ball bobbling on this ground is not easy. And there's one of the key men today. I thought Birds had a fantastic game. But look at Byrne here. This is not an easy kick. Ball bobbles around. Look at this for a finish, because that is not easy. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, got it down just as his momentum was taking him across the touchline. Now, what about this for a difficult conversion attempt? I was watching Harry Byrne warming up beforehand. He was struggling into the breeze to reach from here. The breeze has maybe died down a little bit. That's got enough, has it? That's an earth. Well, he had the line all right, but wasn't reaching. Difficult from us. We're straight behind the kick here. But uh, not a bad effort, but it was just always out of his range. I tell you, every, every year, John, this competition delivers like there's a perfect script writer for these games. Another great finale. Belvedere College 22, St. Michael's 18. Their players piling through, using their boat to try and disrupt the play. St. Michael's have held on to it there. The captain, Jack Dunn, securing possession. Little pick from Jody Booth. Straight into the arms of Connor Byrne. St. Michael's still have it. They have to get downfield. That's hanging up in the breeze. O'Sullivan comes forward. Russell is there. The ball's gone loose. Did it go forward? Yes, it did. Good answer from Harry Byrne. I don't even notice myself. I don't even notice myself shouting, I think is what he said. But as you say, when you're in the thick of the game. Oh yeah. The red mist, John. It's a dangerous, dangerous mist. St. Michael's supporters doing their best to drive the team on. St. Michael's, well, there's seven and a half minutes left in the game. They trail by four. Two penalties would do them, but a try would do them very nicely indeed. But they have their formula. They know what works today. Ball through the hands. Use those two guys. Use Baird, Baird and Dunn. Put it through them. Use O'Donovan. Use these guys. One-off runners. Put extra men in the rook, and the ball, the space will come out wide. A oh, little bubble of the ball, but David Ryan did very well to hold on to it at the second attempt. Baird to Jack Dunn. Lovely soft hands. Good work. The two second rows interacting well. Peter O'Byrne. Ryan is there again. O'Kelly's in from fullback. Good drive from Kelly on his shoulder. Scott Penny adding a bit of weight. Baird athletic catch over his head of the high pass. Okay. Corker and into contact for St. Michael's. Struggling to get downfield here. Belvedere defending high up the pit field. They know they need to keep St. Michael's out of range. Oh, Jonathan, has the ball been ripped loose? It has. And then it's knocked on. Yeah, I think the referee got it spot on there. And she's had a really good day, this referee. That does really well spot on. And there's a lot of comments, John, on Facebook, in particular about the try. There's no TMO in, 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 in schools rugby. There's no TMO, so it's very difficult to see a ball, whether it's down or not. And the referees have to make a decision on the spot. And she's had a fantastic game today. Well, the try she awarded to Russell, she immediately looked to the touch judge, and the touch judge gave the nod. The touch yeah. judge awarded that try. That's a fantastic rip, but it was forward, and the ref spotted that really well. Oftentimes, refs don't spot those ones. Yep. Harry Byrne moving the ball on, went on the loop run. 
It's just a dummy run though. Ryan and Corker working well together. Pulled back to Ryan Baird. How many times is he at first receiver and going for that big carry? Pulled squirts back. Oh. Under the feet, intercept. Try. Belvedere, surely. Hawkshaw in under the post. Well, Belvedere finished the game last year with an intercept try. Have they done it again? Hawkshaw, how quick was he there, Aiden? And the Belvedere College supporters going nuts in Donnybrook now. I saw that coming, John, a mile off. He saw it coming a mile off. It was like watching Michael's heart break in slow motion. And that is game set and match. Yeah, great opportunist try. Great uh, acceleration. It's so hard for to defend an intercept like that. And it was the ball came back awkwardly from the rook under the feet of Peter O'Byrne. Put him under pressure straight away. 27-18. Hugh O'Sullivan has the chance to make it 29-18. No mistake from O'Sullivan. Good conversion. Game over, John, for me. I, I will eat the hat that you kept for me for the first half when it was freezing. If Michaels can come back and win this, but I don't see it happening. Too much of a hill to climb into the wind. Belvedere 29, St. Michael's College 18. Belvedere have secured possession from the restart. We're into the final five minutes of the game. Belvedere making a change. David Hill coming into the action. Well, the decision has uh, gone Belvedere's way here. It came off of St. Michael's hand. So it's a Belvedere line. I don't, don't lose possession for kicking straight to touch. I don't lose position. <laughs> now, please, please make it easy for this man. No, thrown right to the back once again. Not straight. Seven. Very the, the conditions here today, it's, it's as close to impossible as you can imagine to throw, throw 15 yards straight. Not only, look, so he's off the bench. They've never, they've never hit a liner to the back or the middle properly all day. His hands are freezing, and you're giving him that task. That's, Belva will come through this round. They need to look at that for the next. Well, very understandable. St. Michael's anxious to get the ball in, get the ball away. The clock is against them here. They know that. You're, you're purely playing for pride now, St. Michael's. Well, you often see, though, John, is that forced, they'll force something. You might see another intercept. Nine back, nine back. There was a big cheer a moment ago. The clock in the ground has gone past 70 minutes. That's what the supporters saw. The referees allow play go on. We make it uh, just over a minute left. A little fumble ball bobbling around awkwardly. Oh, the referee is keeping the clock. Blows the full-time whistle. Belvedere, the champions, stay in the competition. Four tries they scored to two for St. Michael's. Well-deserved winners, Aiden. Absolutely well-deserved winners.